Hello. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for for the invitation. Thank you, Lorena, to bring me here. Uh, it's a pleasure, really, to have the opportunity to share with you tonight uh, my my works. Uh, I will try to do a lecture quite short. No, I, I know that it's Friday evening, so you are probably tired after one entire week of working here at the university. No, but I will try to condense in a short way, more or less, the main idea that are important for for us. No. Um, tonight I will present you uh, the three most important projects that we have finalized quite recently during the last year, and also one a little bit older project, the Philharmon in Stetchin, that Lorena mentioned. Uh, so in order, because these are, they represent more or less our current work, no? what we are doing now. No? But before to pass to intro, and before to present to you this project, I would like to spend a few minutes to present to you an, in, an installation that we have done in 2014 for the, uh, at the Biennale in, in Venice. No? Uh, because I think it's quite representative uh, about uh, our work, especially about how we work, in a way. No? That year, in 2014, the, the curator was Alejandro Aravena, and it entitled the Biennale Reporting from the Front. No? Essentially, he asked two participants to reflect about it, their work, what is in, really important in their activity, uh, which are the obsession, which are what is really relevant in uh, in, uh, in, in the work of the participant, no? which is the battle that you fight every day in order to achieve architecture. No? So we thought that we had the opportunity, uh, following this guideline from the curator, to make some kind of exercise of auto-analysis no? in order to and try to make an installation able to speak about our work. No? So we entitled the the installation, a sentimental monumentality. And I have to tell you that this center, this word has really, really, has been really important for us, for our activity during the last years. Uh, but I have to say also that this word, probably in, not in a conscious way, you know, are been very important in our practice since the very beginning, you know, in a way. So essentially why we, called the installation a sentimental monumentality. The first things is that this sentence re say that we are working with a paradox. We are working in a controversial way, you know? This, what, what, what is sentimental cannot be monumental. It's a, it's a, it's a huge dichotomy. It's a contradiction even, no? Uh, because the sentimental is speaking about a relationship, uh, a kind of relationship, perceptive, emotional, physical with something, and the idea of monumentality as a relationship with uh, some kind of autonomy, some kind of a, it's an abstract idea in a way. You no, know? so they represent the extreme of a opposite way of work in a way. You no, know? but I have to say that exactly in the middle of these two opposite things is where our work stay, is what, is what we try to achieve in a way. No? So I can, see, I can say that our work is try to find a balance between the specificity of the place and the autonomy of the form. In a way, we try to design a project that is intimated, linked with a context, with the reality of a context, with the different reality that exists uh, in a context. And a context is not just a physical things, it's also an imaginary things. So, and we try to establish some kind of sentimental relationships, so empathetic, emotional also, that try to really absorb the identitary character of a place. No? But at the same time, we are quite conscious that Architecture is something objectual, is an object, is an artifact, and as an artifact, should has a, 
a value uh, by its own, di per se. No? So it's not necessary that it's linked with a context. And, and this is a paradox, but it's exactly what in which in this dichotomy we are interested. No? So an architecture has its own objectuality, its own autonomy, and it should be valued by itself. No? So in a way, we try to define an architecture, they start reading a contextual condition, no? what is really relevant in a place, but then at the same time, we try to forget the context that has built, in a way, the project. No? So in order, and, and I think this is really the, the main idea that uh, is behind all our project. No? And in order to uh, describe this idea in a physical way, what we have done it's something very simple. So we ask it to the curator to work at the Corderie. I hope you, uh, many of you, you know this building. It's a very beautiful building in Venice. This uh, is a very long warehouse, no? essentially conformed by just column, just a sequence and column and, and walls. No? This, is just, this drawing represents just a section of this, uh, of this very long way. No? And so the column, in a way, was the most important element, is, is, is the, what built this building. No? And we just had a new column in the middle of this, of this place. No? We will see what's it. So we made this one, then we wrote a short text, some kind of manifesto that we have called it a sentimental monumentality, no? and these two elements were uh, was our installation. No? So we, we essentially we placed this object no? in the middle, has an, like a new column. No? So in a, in a way, this is a very site-specific intervention. The object, the installation, is like that because of that context. It's grow up. It's the context, in a way, that defines this project. No, and the object just to the, the find to f try to find an intimate relationship with this place. No, but at the same time, it's some kind of of an abstract element. No, it's we try to uh, transform just the column had its own archetype. In a way, it's just an archetype, no? So it's still an element that's speaking with the same language of the column. It's speaking about verticality, gravity, etc., all this kind of thing. But it tried to explain these things in a very abstract way, no? It's it's a, an it's an artifact, an an archetype, no? So it's something that that's the same times belong to this context, but at the same time, it tried to forget this context. No? Here is the paradox that guide our work. And fortunately, a few after the, after the, uh, the, the exhibition in Venice, we had the, uh, recently, a few months ago, we have the opportunity to move the column in a totally different context, in a completely natural landscape in a place in south of Barcelona. And suddenly, this object no, lost the contest. No? But in a way, it's still relevant because it's condition of an archetype, in a way. No? So, and for us, it was really interesting to see how this object has deeper say, still a value, no? even if the context in which has been built has been lost, no? in a way. No? So between this is the dichotomy that the guide our way, no? our way of work. And so now, after this short introduction, I will try to present these four projects no? that essentially are the result of uh, this uh, reflection. Um, a few years ago, I think in 2015, 14, we have finalized uh, our first very important international project is a philharmony, a concert hall in Stechin. Stechin is a small city in the north of Poland, very close to Berlin in, in Germany. Um, in the site of the competition, there was 
uh, and a philharmony uh, that was quite important in the city. In the east of Europe, you know, there, there is a, a very important tradition uh, related with music, with classical music. So this was really a very civic building, a very important building. But then during the Second World War, uh, it was completely uh, destroyed. No? And also, uh, this is a recent image of the city. Also, the entire city of, of Stetchin was bombed. Uh, it, I can say, almost completely uh, destroyed. No? And what uh, in the city today is like a um, collage, like a patchwork of different, uh, of different things. In this image, uh, you can see this image was, was taken from our office that we had during the construction. Uh, but it represents quite well how the city is. No? It's, a very, it's a mix of different things. Uh, there are housing blocks from the socialist period, from the 60s and 70s. Uh, there are part of the uh, medieval town. Uh, you can see also some uh, uh, big monument that appears, you know, very massive, that appears you know, in the middle of this very flat uh, landscape. You know? And in a way, when we did the project, we had an idea that for us was really important to confront our design to establish a relationship with this atmosphere, with this, with this character of the city, or, or at least with the lost character that the city had. Uh, before, no? so and this is a drawing of the building very close to our site, no? a building that wasn't destroyed no? during the war. And this drawing represent a very typical public and civic building of this uh, city. No? It's, and it speaks about mass, verticality, rhythm, stupid roof, pinnacles some kind of decorative element in the upper part. No? So all this element for us represents some kind of identitary element for this city, for this context. And in a way, our work it, some, many times is just try to uh, interpret this condition that we just found in a place. Many of our produce projects are really linked about what we found in a place, no? without any pre, uh, prejudice in a way, without any condition defined uh, a priori. No? So, and the result was this object, no? something that has the same element of the pre-existing building, mass, verticality, stupid roof, etc., but are condensed in a way that uh, the architecture has object as a value by itself because it's, it's guided by its own internal rule about its own structure, program, etc., etc. No? So again, the project, it's a super specific project for this place. In a way, it's really something that try to establish this intimate, sentimental base uh, connection with uh, the environment in which is placed. No? I can see that the, uh, the building that you see on the, uh, I, I don't have a pointer here, but anyway, um, on the right no, has the same element of the new philharmony, no? but in a way transformed in another thing. It's still a building that has the same mass, verticality, width, stepped roof. No? And, here, in this case, uh, also, it tried to redefine a new urban condition, just mark it precisely this corner, as was marked before by the previous uh, uh, philharmony that was placed in the same, in the same uh, uh, location. No? But for sure, when you design something, there are a lot of things that are moving around your way. So in a way, this is something also, some kind of expressionist building in a way, no? Because we also try to link this building with a certain uh, imaginary context, no? This idea of this, this expressionist uh, that was present in this geographic, in this geography. Hmm? Oh, what's happened? I don't know, I'm, I'm looking here. 
Uh, is there... Maybe I touch something? Nothing was touched or changed. Bear with me one second. Okay. Is the connection? Right? Yeah, I don't know. No, nothing has changed. It just went out. You checked the back room again, but I haven't touched anything. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We, we, without the images, it's a little bit difficult to. <laughs> but if you want, I can continue. <laughs> so, we'll see. In the laptop, is there the image? But when you said start. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm wondering, so you said that um, you asked for that specific building in, uh, in Venice. Um, can you explain a little bit why? Because in another slide, you also said that you don't have this free idea of what you want the project to be, but it's like you had a desire for this building to be home. So can you tell us a little bit why this building versus No, they, they, what we have done in Venice was try to, so, to how to explain, to, to do an installation, like a prototype, you know, able to explain uh, the conceptual approach that we try to use in our project. You know? So we, yeah, <laughs> so it, essentially what, ah, okay, is there. But just to, so we really, we use this installation as a pretext in order to explain an approach. No? So we, the idea, so for the reason, we, we asked it to the curator to head the intervention in that place because it was a little bit more evident to, uh, to transmit, uh, to, to make an installation able to speak, to, to define this kind of pro our way of work in a way, no? or just this, like some kind of pretext in a way. No? So I, I can continue even more shortly than before. <laughs> uh, no, so yeah, as I said, no. So we try to work in continuity with something, with a context, but without any kind of nostalgic, in a way, relationship. No, here, for example, the materiality of the new building is completely different from the materiality of the. the, the, the this closed building, but also the other buildings. No? So, and all our buildings are, in, in many cases, are solved in a very simple way. There is just one element able to characterize, we can say, the building. In this case, we put a lot of attention in the roof. No? The roof is probably the main feature of this building. No? It was in, we working in this way in order to establish this kind of continuity with this artificial landscape, with the urban landscape, but also because uh, around the building there, there is a big uh, part of a big garden, no? and when you approach the building from the distance, you can see only the, the roof. No? For, for the reason the roof uh, achieve a very important uh, significance in this project. No? Another general characteristic of our work is that we really try to solve complex programs in, a, in the most simple and basic way. No? In this way, it, the symphony is a huge building for a, a, a symphonic hall for more than 1,000 person, another hall for chamber music, etc., etc. But everything it was solved in the most simple way. There is a crown, a perimet a perimetrical crown that essentially contain all the vertical uh, elements and technical elements. Inside of this crown, the two main holes are floating, we can say in this way, and the entire interstitial space you can see, so in the entire interstitial space here is just a big 
public space in a way. No? So in a way, the, the main foyer, the main lobby is like a kind of covered plaza. No, we really strive, we really wanted to create a public space. Wasn't possible to work outside of the building because of the constraint of the site and also because for climatological reason in a way. So we try to emphasize also the dimension of this space and really conceive it as an inner plaza, no, covered plaza. And this space, uh, I think we think that this kind of building should work in a very easy way. No? So in this case, the visitor are the possibility to go up here, enter in the main hall here, continuous go up. In the upper floor, there is an exhibition uh, space, and then continuous go down, enter in the other uh, room here, in the other concert room, and then continuous go down. No? So there is an internal loop that bring the visitor all around uh, the, the building. No? Um, this space is essentially characterized by this circulation system, no? because this is the reason why this stairs is so prominent in this space, and essentially from the form of the of the two chambers hall, and it's and and, and it's lighting with cenital light. And for sure, when you have to design a philharmony, the main element, the main program is the concert hall. No? And the problem was how to define, how to design a contemporary concert hall dedicated for classical music. No? Because at the beginning, the idea was to design a room, a, a hall just for classical music. So we work in the same way uh, that we use for the entire building. We try to give continuity or working continuity with a tradition. No? In this case, a tradition of the concert hall of the East Europe. No? So, and essentially we work with the section, with light, with this uncertain idea of ornamentation, of the ornament. No? So the section essentially is some kind of classical section. There is an horizontal roof that is still the best option for the acoustic of the room. There are two stages, no, in a very classical way. So, but this we had this idea that uh, we wanted to use this idea of ornament as a link with a tradition. No, so we started to image that just defining a detail. No, this is kind of inclined. It is just a, an inclined panel. And is like this because of acoustical reason, because technical reason. Then probably we were able to define the entire concert hall as some kind of large ornamentation. The entire room is conformed by this element. No, and what is interesting here for us is that this notion of ornament is linked with a notion, with a technical notion. So is no more a decoration, it's something different. No? The ornament is this idea that permit to give continuity to this kind, this tradition of classical uh, concert hall, no? but the technical element is what it transforms it in something that makes sense for a contemporary architecture. And also, we use the like as another element that permit to give a continuity with a tradition in many of uh, historical and classical concert hall, the light is a protagonist of these spaces. And here was really important because it permits to make uh, uh, to make the material of the of the hall uh, more vibrant, vibrant, no? in a way. And the other element that we introduced and was really really important also is that we worked with. Um, uh, uh, with an unusual material for contemporary architecture. So we use for the entire concert hall the, a synthetic golden leaf with this size. No? So, and uh, the hall is essentially a huge artisanal work. And when I speak about that we are strive to work with the specificity of the place, this means also try to discover how to build, how to work in a place. No? In, that, in that region, in Poland, there, there still has a lot of uh, uh, um, person able to work with this element, no? just to put this more uh, golden, golden leaf. No? 
And then, so here you can see another picture with just natural light. No? So the variation of the light, uh, so the, 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 the whole really changed dramatically if we use natural light or artificial light. No? So it's like some kind of uh, jewel no? inside a quite austere and uh, basic and hermetic building. No? And the facade is also a kind of ornament in a way. No? It's, the entire building is made in glass with uh, an exterior skin of vertical uh, metallic element painted in, in white, very, very dense. No? And this permits uh, to modify the perception of the building during the different uh, uh, hour of the day, no? especially, when the, especially when the building is in use, especially during the evening, no? the building start to explain to the city that something happened inside. No? And there is a point no? in which uh, the perception of this quite monolith, quite hermetic building is changed. No? It uh, manifests its activity, no? it, 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 and it became some kind of uh, relevant element inside of a quarter that is, was at the time quite uh, uh, abandoned. No? So again, it's a building that uh, wanted to work with this specific context, wanted to establish this intimate relationship with this urban landscape at the same time, but it is an, something uh, that has its autonomy. It's an artifact in a way, no? It's just an object, object placed in there, no? And what is, was more important is an important thing of, of this building that just after the, the opening, it really became a civic building, a public building, and uh, the people, the people, the citizen bring the, the projects as uh, give him a lot of uh, a lot of life, a lot of. Uh, no? That this was something very important for this kind of building. Uh, a few years ago, we finalized a fine art museum in Kur. Kur is a small city south of Zurich in Switzerland, in the Graubünden region. Uh, this was a really a beautiful project. Uh, it's an extension of an old building. Uh, that uh, in this old museum uh, there were a very beautiful small collection, small but very beautiful collection, especially uh, about uh, painting of uh, German expressionism. No? Here there are painting by Segantini, uh, a lot of painting by the Giacometti family, Alberto and also Giovanni and the other person of the family. There are a lot of painting by Kirchner, etc., etc. So this kind, a quite homogeneous collection, I have to say, very, very, very nice. So when we visit the, I, I show you this image because when we visited the, for the first time the museum, we found uh, in the atelier, in the old museum, these two figure by Giacometti. No? And I don't know, I don't know why this figure started to be important with us because uh, every uh, sculpture has its own, the face of every country is, uh, uh, has its own personality in a way, but they are made with the same element, with the same materiality, with the same things in a way. No? But every, every, each one has a very different uh, aptitude in a way. No? And in some way this idea when we start about thinking about how to make the extension of the building start to be quite uh, important no? in a way. You know, sometimes you look, you found something that finally are something important. No? So this is an image of the original building. The original building is a very quite beautiful but bizarre also building. It's a neo uh, classical building is a villa made in the 18th century uh, in a neo Palladian style. is clearly inspired by La Rotonda by Palladio. Then we will see the plan. Uh, but uh, it was um, a resin. Uh, it was the house of a very rich uh, man that uh, uh, imported was a merchant that imported textile for Egypt. So 
he put uh, over this neo palladian building a, a kind of uh, decoration ornamentation inspired inspired in oriental motif no uh, then we will see so the the pavement uh, the the floor in the interior is like an an arabesque pavement in a way and in here is more dif difficult to see but there are some kind of ornamentation here for example there are some sphinx in the entry this was the original entry no? so and in 1982 peter zumtor made the renovation of this building and he reconstruct these two winter garden no, here in this uh, way, and also he uh, refurbished the lower level here for host uh, temporary exhibition. No? And it's interesting to see, and also he wrote that in a short text, uh, that uh, he had this kind of uh, very delicate wooden uh, uh, element here, some kind of Japanese uh, in a Japanese way, in a way, no, very delicate. Very, see, also try, probably, but this is my interpretation, uh, reinterpret this uh, kind of uh, uh, link with, uh, with the original building. No? So, for example, this is the Sphinx. It's quite strange in the middle of the Swiss mountain to find the, Sphin the Sphinx at the entry, I have to say. No? And around the building, there is also a very small garden no? but that surrounds the entire villa with this uh, uh, quite romantic uh, statue. No? So, this is the plan of the original building, clearly inspired by the La Rotonda. No? There is a, a, with this double symmetry. In a way, so when we started the project, we had the idea that uh, working with this idea of absolute, no, that uh, was at the base of the Palladium project, was probably important in order to discover how to make the extension of this building. But at the same time, we started to imagine that probably the project should work as a diptych in a way, no? Something, these are the famous diptych by Piero della Francesca, no? Two paintings in both sides of a, of a, of a painting, no? Uh, different characters, same palette, same color, same materiality, in a way, no? So we started to imagine that the building should work more or less in this way. And at the very end, we try to define a new building no, with its own autonomy that based in the same element, same identitary element, same, with the same characteristic that has the original building and still work as a, as a diptych in a way. No? So, and this is the floor plan, the ground floor of the project. I think it's one of the most uh, synthetic drawing that we, we did. We really strive, as I said before, to reduce the entire architecture, the tri program, to its minimum terms. The, essentially, the extension is just conformed by two cores these two cores that contain all the service and vertical elements, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and in the middle there is uh, the foyer. No, so the geometry of the new building is an um, extrusion in a way of the geometry of the original building. There are still this idea to work with a double symmetry. No, and this is this idea to really kind of work with a kind of absolute building, no? just composed by two elements, some kind of ideal building, no? pure building, in a way. No? And this is how the building appears. So in a way, also the extension, I des can describe it as a palladium building that uh, work with some kind of uh, orientalist uh, ornamentation, in a way. No? So in a way, the same element of the pre-existing are filtered in a way into the new building in the same way that we work it in the in stitching. No? But what is really important is every project is every of our projects really try to find this work with what is specific in a way. What we really reject to work in a 
to just make a generic building in a way. We really try to emphasize what is specific in a place, what is unique, try to highlight the differences of different places in a way. No? And the architecture is a response of this, of this condition. No? But then for sure, the architecture should forgot that as this link and should have value and, and, and meaning by itself. No? By it because it's an autonomous object in a way. No? So again, this paradox that guide our our work. No? So again, in, in a way, the, the, then we will see, no? but um, around the building, we try to have the maximum public space as possible no? uh, in order to insert in the most precise way the new building into this very delicate uh, context. No? Um, here is the site plan. You can see how we really wanted to... So when you see the project, you are, your attention is to the object. No? But when we designed, when we made the design for us, what was really crucial was really trying to have this space around here in order to make the building brief, to make the perfect incension, to work with uh, this kind of duality with the original uh, building. No? So for the reason we surrounded the building from this kind of mineral um, uh, garden, no? in a way, like some kind of the, the plinth that, or the pedestal that is at the base of a, of a sculpture, in a way. No? So in this image, I think it's, uh, you can see no, the, the air that is around here. No? But for sure, the building has object. No? You speak about this in the term. In the, in, the, in the same term of the original building. No? This is a, some kind of double symmetry, centrality, the entry, the door, the portal, this kind of classical element that are reinterpreted in, this, uh, in, the new, in a contemporary way. No? But for sure, when you... So in order to achieve all these kind of things, we propose a very radical intervention in, about the program. So we have the opportunity to reduce the building and uh, uh, outside, because basically we reinverse the program and we put all the uh, exhibition area in the underground in order to really have the possibility to reduce at the maximum the building outside. So behind here, it is in the first level, there is the permanent connection, and in the lower level here, there is the exhibition um, spaces. And here, there is the connection with the spaces uh, that uh, Peter Zumthal uh, made it in 1982. No? So also the connection, no? there's no outside connection. The connection is made just, uh, just uh, underground. So really, the building world has two autonomous buildings that compose an urban unity. Mm -hmm. And the, the foyer, the lobby, is still it's uh, declare this intimate relationship with the original building. The facade of the original building is the facade of the new foyer, in, in this sense. There are still this idea of numeration in the ceiling. Just a, a point that is important to mention that also the, the, the working with the prom was quite radical because we propose in the competition to don't having the loading dock that is crucial for a museum. But we propose to use this space also has a loading dock. It's a lobby, but also a loading dock. No? Then we will see the door. So the trucks can enter here. And we propose that in order really to create this kind of public space around the building, reduce the footprint, etc., cetera, et cetera. No? There is a quite big stairs going down in the lower level. This is the minus one, in a way, for no, the entire building, the entire stage is making an exposed concrete. And here in the first level, a minus one, you can see how the building tried to establish the relationship with this Palladian idea. The museum is, uh, this floor is composed basically by a sequence of different room with different proportion, perfect to, exp to display art, no? in a way. Again, there is this uh, the, the room are just combined in this way, no? following the, the Palladios plan in a way. No? And here there are just the cores. No? These are the images of this, uh, a few of these uh, spaces here. This is the stairs that connects with the uh, old building. 
And in the minus two, it's again when you can see the effort we made in order to reduce the building to just a few elements. Essentially here, there is just the two core that organize the entire floor plan. The, all the space here is a flexible space for temporary exhibition. And these are a few images of this space that for sure can divide it, etc., etc. So how to conform, how to work with the materiality in this case of the facade for this idea of numeration was really important for us, no? Uh, in order to establish this intimate and conceptual relationship with the original building. Essentially, the entire facade is made in concrete with huge prefab elements uh, in, in, uh, in concrete, um, super precise. We take advantage of the, the opportunity to work in Switzerland that has this very high uh, level, high quality in working with uh, concrete, but it's also it's the same message. We work in this way because we were in Switzerland, we understood how to work there, so we take advantage of the opportunity to work with concrete, for example. No? And here, for example, the edge of this element achieved like this, is one centimeter, it's really, really difficult. No? And, and it permits to create this kind of bus relief no? that conform and move the entire facade and permit them to hide all the technical things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, no? In order to highlight the importance that the loading lock or the missing loading lock, in a way, has for the project, we work with Stanley Steel, steel for this uh, for the delivery door, in a way, with the same relief. And this is the only element that uh, don't follow this double symmetry that uh, guide the entire building. It's a kind of uh, uh, yeah, how to say, it's a disconnection no, with the other building, but in order to remark the, the importance of this element. So more recently, just a few months ago, we finalized another fine art museum, this time in, in Lausanne, in Switzerland, again. Uh, this project is quite different, much bigger than the previous one. Uh, the idea, so the site is all this side here, it's very big, it's more than, I don't know how to say in English, but quite big. And the idea was to place it, it not just in this area, not just the fine art museum, but to put there the three main museums uh, of Lausanne. The fine art museum, the design museum, and the photography museum. So the idea of the competition was really about to create some kind of art district inside of this uh, of this site. So, and in, inside of this site, there were a lot of uh, industrial building dedicated to the maintenance of the train. The most important one was this one, an, an industrial warehouse from the 1911. Here, you, you have to notice this element, the main hole here with these arched windows here. No? So, uh, the collection of the museum, so the, the, the program, uh, the project was about to make a general master plan for the entire site and then design the most important building, the, the fine art museum. No? Here the collection, I have to say the, the museum is much bigger, but the collection is not so nice like uh, the, the previous one. Uh, the main uh, painting that they have is about Felix uh, Vallotton. These are quite nice, really, but it's a small part of the collection. Then the collection is very heterogeneous. There are a lot of yeah, typical things, impressionism, some, a little bit of contemporary art, etc. And also this heterogeneity of the collection are guided us a little bit about discover how to make the gallery, in a way. No? So this scheme represents the original site, no? the, the entire site with this um, uh, industrial building here. So when we started the project, we really tried to transform, especially the this uh, 1911 uh, warehouse, into a fine art museum. Then we realized two things essentially. The first that was trying to transform this uh, um, hall into a fine art museum with all the technical requirement. It means what would means exactly 
basically demolish it in a way or just keeping the facade at the maximum in a way. And then also we realized that probably, again in this case, was more important trying to define a general strategy, a general urbanistic strategy, and then discover how the architecture could follow this uh, general urban strategy. No? So, and this was a really important moment in the design phase. We really start to imagine that what was important was not the architecture in itself, probably, for sure it, it is, but uh, not was the main element, but probably how to conform a void, how to conform a new public space, how to conform a central core, public core for the entire art, this thing probably was the most important thing. No? This is a plan of the office in Florence, no? in which publics, uh, so in which urban space and architecture are the same in a way. No? Where start the architecture, where finish the public space. No? There's no uh, uh, division between these two, these two uh, notions, no? in a way. So we start into put our attention not in the object, but in the void, how to create this void, no? So, and we continue, so these are several design phases, no? And here, the, we started to define a limit here, another massive element here, and start to appear something void in the middle of this thing. And at the very end, this was the scheme that we proposed. This is not exactly the scheme we propose in the competition, it's a second revision, because then they and the other two museums were combined just in one building here at the end. But here, for what is representative here, so we envisioning this kind of esplanade, this long plaza connected with the plaza in front of the train station, no? and has the element that permit to connect this new quarter with the city. No? So, and then the museum, the architecture or the museum, or the idea or the conceptual idea for the, the architecture arrived very, in an easy way. The museum, it was just an inhabited wall that divide the, the world of the trucks here from the new public space is there. This is an image, no? So you see this kind of long wall that divide the public space here from the trains and establish also some kind of relationship with this other long building of the trains here and now other no it creates this kind of facade along the along the the trains no so again uh, this is a view from the train station uh, the images are when the building was still in under construction so you can start to see here the, the, this esplanade, this void, not connected with this space, and the building sits there in a very simple way. Also, again, we try, in the, this is an urbanistic project in a way, but really try to solve the complexity of this site. It was really complex because uh, there's no exit from the other side. It's very narrow, very long, etc. Again, and with a lot of, uh, with three museums, in the, in the very, in the most precise and the most simple way. No? So here you can see again the importance of this space. No? And what's really important for us, again, the project is something very specific for this place. We didn't want it to lose the industrial atmosphere that was present in this place. This place is probably, Lausanne is a city that is uh, inclined, you know, going down to the lake, you know? and this is probably the, the only horizontal space, it's uh, some kind of artificial uh, soil here, you know? uh, that permit to have the, the old uh, industrial building. You know? So the arch, it permit this kind, this that conform this kind of abstract space, no? So, and after this uh, urban uh, decision, the museum appeared some kind, is really try to work with this kind of resonances of an industrial building. It's like a long container, in a, in a, an industrial container for, for art, it's in a way, no? It's massive, it's long, it's quite hermetic, no? It's monolith, it's abstract, no? Again, we try to we, we try to balance between the specificity of this place and an autonomy of the form in a way. No, uh, 
This is another view for the opposite side. Here there is the other museum in construction. No? Here the train station. And all this will be the future esplanade no? here. So we decided, we took this uh, urbanistic design. We decided to demolish a big part of the original hall that was not so interesting from an, an architectural point of view. But then we start to imagine how to work with the again, with, the, with the, the memory, in a way, of this place, or the identitary character of this place. So we start to imagine that the relationship with this original condition was not about uh, just preserving the entire building, but just working with a collection of fragments that can recreate or have a link with the pre-existing um, site. No? So we started to keep part of the floor here here of the industrial of this industrial building and we also try to to preserve part of uh, the uh, some fragment of the original building also here there is the plankton land this industrial element that permit to turn the the trains no so suddenly we discover that probably this small fragment of the pre-existing building could permit to establish a new narrative for the project, a narrative that permit to establish a link, a working continuity with something, but also to permit to have a new uh, rhythm, a new, a, new, uh, yeah, a new narrative for uh, the contemporary project. No? So here, this small element, this small fragment, no? it becomes the main element, the main figure of the project. The project is just a neutral back, background, in a way, no? in which sits this uh, small element. From this size, the building is very hermetic. It's essentially closed, also because, because of our law, so we need to protect the artwork inside. So there are just a few openings in the public space here and in the other space there. So. This idea of inhabited wall is quite clear here. From one side, it's completely closed. From the other side, it's very porous towards the plaza here. And uh, in a way, the ground floor is just an extension of the public space inside of the project. But this small fragment of the pre-existing building started to be very, very important. It just not something uh, is an... Uh, anecdotic, but it's really crucial for the entire project. We put here the new foyer. Now this defines the century of uh, the central point of the entire on the entire uh, museum. No? And this element that probably for us was the most beautiful things, the most emotional element of, of this uh, huge uh, old uh, warehouse started to be integrated in the new project, no? And no, here the new foyer, you can see the foyer here is this, this uh, arched windows. So, and this element became the main compositive element of the new foyer. The new foyer is a very vertical space with natural light, with uh, this arch that permit to establish a relationship with this industry, with the, with the tracks, no? Uh, that uh, are just behind here. No, it's a very simple space, quite monumental, entirely made by a, with a grey mortier that permit to move a little bit the surface. And what is beautiful that is this window is facing south. So when you arrive, you discover a building that is quite hermetic, quite massive in a way, also industrial, but suddenly you enter and the, this condition change completely. It's a museum uh, basically with a lot of light, natural light, south light entry in this, in this space. No? These are the opposite view. Around this space there are the main circulation system that go up, no? here and there. But then again, the program has been solved in a very simple way, in a very pragmatic way also. From one side here, there are the gallery for temporary exhibition. From the other side here, there is the space for the permanent connection. And this part here is for technical atelier, my, more private. The section is not so good because here there is another cut 
with a big stairs also that lead from here, they bring you from here to there, then we will see. No? So it's just composed by section in a very, very pragmatic way. You know? So these are the stairs that go up both sides, quite vertical. No? And these stairs arrive here. We have these spaces here, then the gallery. No? When you arrive here again, the light is the main element that, I you know, it's very nice how it works in the, you know, with this material here. But the public space has this kind of materiality, then we decide this because of the heterogeneity of the collection, also working with the curator, with the director, etc., to use wood inside of uh, all the spaces, because this wood is more, useful in order to present contemporary art, but also classical art, you can work in different way. You know? A mineral floor would be too difficult for the classical art. You know? They have a lot of painting from the 16th, 15th century, etc., etc. You know? So this has been the reason, the reason why we modified it. You know? So the gallery work in a way, in a, in, in, with this materiality, the public space in another materiality. In the first floor, it's a more intimate space for the basically classical art. This image, uh, this picture was taken recently. Uh, there's no still a good collection here. They just put what they have. So in the future here, there will be uh, classical art. We can know, we can say classical to just to say an old an ancient art. And this is the second floor, the upper floor. In your case, the third floor. But um, in, in this, uh, every time is very difficult. First floor, second floor, anyway. So, but what is important here is to notice this is a quite huge building, and again, the entire project is solved by essentially five cores. These cores that organize the main vertical connection system here and there, and then the entire space is just open, it's just free in a, in a way. No? We have some partition here to organize that we decide with the, with the director how to put it. No? But then essentially this is a huge void. No? And again, there is this really effort in order to reduce architecture to its minimum, no? just a structure in a way. Then we will see the last project that we're presenting, which really the project is just a structure. No? And this is the connection, this is these stairs here. It's uh, an element we had it after the competition in order to permit to have a continuity no, of the visiting inside of the building. And this is like a cut inside of the building that permit from one point to see the lake and from the other point to see the, uh, the plaza. This is the opposite view. Also, it's a space to have uh, informal presentation, concert, uh, talk, etc., etc., for the, the students. And here you can see in this image how work this cut. This is the only element that is visible from outside. No, then the entire building is written with with this vertical element, all made in brick. No, but what is nice also is to see that. Uh, the building, it appears as an aromatic building, but here you discover that it's very, very porous. Especially in the ground floor, it's completely open, no? in order to activate the public space in front. This is a cross section, and the other main feature of the project is the roof. It's a very complex roof. Uh, the building is sitting east-west, no, and the, so the north was in the long side. So we have this difficulty to try to catch the north light in a building that is working in the other direction. So essentially, we design this kind of skylight. No, uh, it's really this a very sophisticated element. Uh, so we started to design it, and then we work it with a lot of uh, during two years or more three years, essentially with physics an engineer just to discover which is the best inclination of this element here, because to find a balance between the best uh, lightning, but also the, to protect the interior to the solar uh, radiation and to over eating, uh, eating in, this, in this area. So it's a very technical, very sophisticated element that again, we try to solve it in the most 
simple and precise way. The images is difficult to, to, to explain it, but if you one day you have the possibility to visit the museum, you will see that the quality of the light going down, it's really beautiful and it worked perfectly for the collection of the artwork. It's something very massive, it's more than three meters, like nine feet or more. Um, but uh, uh, it looks very light. You know? And these are the other part in which they started to put the collection. Here is the sequence of these rooms. The entire building is made in brick in order to have this kind of industrial resonances. No? Also, the original building there were made in brick, many of them. No? Um, we, the building, I have to mention that it's uh, for the standard Swiss, for the Swiss standard, it's a very low budget building, very, very low budget building. So at the very end, we had the, we used uh, a standard brick. We didn't have the possibility to make an artisanal brick that was at the beginning, but we tried to customize it in order to put during the, when they put it in the, I don't know how to say in English, no, but so we had the clay, no, and we work with fleshed joints in order that from the distance you really appreciate uh, the building has a mass. No, you cannot see the small element of the of the bricks. No, and this very deep vertical element permit to filter the northern light into the into the museum, but also to conform this kind of very monolithic element during the night. The light coming out from the gallery. So and you start to discover that this metal building has a different life inside, no, in a way, and can activate all this public space here, no, in this area. So the last project I will present you is a project we also finalized very recently, uh, one month ago, more or less at the same time of the Luzian project. Uh, this is the Tanzhaus. Tanzhaus is a dance academy in Zurich. It's probably the most important dance academy in Zurich, even in Europe, I think. It's very, very important, this, uh, uh, this building. Uh, this is an image of the site. The site is here on the right, outside of the picture. No, you can see, yeah, exactly there. And uh, this is a very beautiful part of the city. It's, not, it's a little bit far away from the city center. It's a, an area in which there are a lot of changing right now, urbanistic changing. It's a very heterogeneous, heterogeneous area in a way, no? A little bit industrial. There are these kind of industrial, the bridges here, they were built as silos here for the grain. There are warehouse around here, new building, this is by Guillaume Guyer here. There is this very beautiful uh, building for, uh, for changing room, for having swim here, no, because the people can swim in the river here, and this is the, another building of the of the dance academy. No, so it's a place that has this kind of heterogeneous, a little bit complex uh, industrial condition. No, so again, we wanted to deal with, with the, how we, the problem was how to to work with this condition. The other thing is that there was a promenade here along the river. And I can see that this area was not dangerous, but a little bit, yeah, you know, a little bit like this. No? So uh, since the beginning, we wanted to focus our attention on two main things. The first was the idea to identify the building as a new infrastructure, in a way, related with the existing infrastructure that are present in this site with these bridges, two bridges, warehouse, etc., etc. And then the other thing was really to focus our attention to create a new promenade, a new public space, no? in order to reactivate also the, 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 the public activity in this, uh, in this area. So in this case, we didn't build an object, but we just define a topography. No, you can see the building is here. It's conformed by these three levels, and this is the promenade. No, uh, it's just a topography that permit to the people to move on the roof 
or in the first on in this level or in the other level the other decision that we took that was really important we decided to place the new entry of the the academy not on the street level but on this level in order really to force the people to go down and use this new promenade along the river you know? so the project is essentially is like a plinth just a plinth and a structure no, that it sits along the river that permits to have uh, uh, the, the manifest the presence of the uh, old building the, the here there and similar to this uh, other wooden building super nice no it just sit and emphasize this the horizontality of this place bridges no bath etc etc and then so essentially the project just conform these levels of public space and this like a structure that conform a new facade uh, along the river. No? The entire building is made in concrete. And I think I, I have to say that probably this is the most vanguardist, the most complex and the most pioneerist in a way building that we have done and I will try to explain you why. So we wanted to just create, reduce the building as its structure in a way, you know? So essentially we just conformed this one and we decided to work with a very special concrete. His name is Lemput. Essentially it's a concrete that uh, just because of the mass, uh, it permit to create a uh, thermical uh, insulation. So if you notice here, there's no, um, layer of insulation or whatever. It's just concrete, just concrete. It's really some kind of primitive building. The, the architecture is, is not composed by layer and layer and layer, etc., etc. It's just concrete, no? Uh, but this concrete is very sophisticated in a way. Uh, so the form of this, uh, we can say the column, is like this because of two reasons. Because here we have the possibility. Um, I, I, I explain you this detail because basically this is the main drawing of the entire project. Because this is the rule that guide the entire architecture in a way. You know, so we have the. It's like this because here we have the frame of the window just hanging against the concrete, like this. This form permit and this mass permit to have uh, essentially avoid any thermal bridge in a way and really create some kind of archaic, basic, primitive structure. So the technology is hyper sophisticated in order to achieve something that is very, very basic in a way. You know? And then also we will explain more things about that. So with this special concrete, uh, this concrete has a problem, it's not very resistant. The mechanical resistance of this concrete is very, very low. Um, so we work just in this wall and in this wall with this type of concrete, then the horizontal part is a normal concrete. I think it's the first building entirely made with this uh, uh, concrete in, in Switzerland for sure. I don't know in the other places. No. There are just a very few, one or two buildings made with this concrete, just, but they use it just in a very small thing. We really tried here to use the entire, to make the entire building with this concrete, no? Because we are really interested to, also, in, we are in a point in which we really wanted to do something basic, just reflect about the fundamental of architecture, no? So, and the other important thing is that this form of this element, for sure, when we started the project, we had the idea, we have a formal idea in mind, this idea to establish some kind of uh, link with these industrial metallic bridges that cross the, the building with the hard wires you know, present with this, the diagonal that exists there. But then we discover, we put all the things together and essentially it's like that because in this way, the concrete admit to work with columns with this type of concrete, we cannot just make a column. It's not so, it's broken in a way. So we enlarge the dimension here in order to have the opportunity to uh, to use this material. And there's the other important thing and crucial aspect is that, uh, sorry, uh, is that in this way, 
in the upper part of the building we have less light and the lower part we have more light. And this is a really important point because, for example, the architecture, especially I have to say in Switzerland during the last year, 20 years, is dominated by the question about how to deal with the solar radiation. This is apparently very technical, very technical question as uh, promote a huge reflection in, our, in architecture. Many Swiss buildings are really about how to control these things because it's by law you need to put something no, in order to con control the, the solar radiation no, for an energetic reason. No. If you look carefully at the architecture in this way, you will see that many of the very well-known projects that I mean, deal with this uh, condition. No. So, we wanted to make a very archaic and primitive building, in a way, for the reason we use this concrete. But at the same time, at some point, we have to deal with this uh, problem. No? And also here, so basically, essentially, this is facing south. It was necessary to have louvers everywhere. So all our projects basically collapse in this point. So we work in, with, I don't know, many years. So they, we, we spent three years just to build, build this building that is super small. It's 100,000 meters. It's, I don't know in feet, it's 10,000 feet, or square feet, something similar. Um, but then we, we proposed to the client something very innovative. So we proposed them to use vegetation as a device in order to control solar radiation. And we, when we propose uh, that solution, uh, the client uh, basically was a little bit, uh, he thought that was a joke. Uh, then, step by step, he started to believe that probably was possible. Then they engaged the university in Zurich, they were working with the ETH, with the engineeristic and agronomical part of the ETH. So, we really working and discover how to use vegetation to deal, to control the solar radiation. So we start to work a long process, and we also made, we are making a book for this, because it's, there's no building that works in this way. This is the first building that used this system. So essentially, we also study which type of uh, vegetation we need to plant there, because of the dimension of the leaf, and the period in which this leaf uh, exists. You know, essentially, in summertime, it's essentially is a mass of, uh, is, Green in winter time, there's, uh, uh, there's no lift, etc., etc. Also, we study the insect that can enter into the building. No, so these are drawing of this facade and the building grow up. But what's important? So we propose to them to work in these ways also because for us was important to use this technical issue in order to make architecture in a way, and for us. Since the beginning, we wanted that this structure was one day integrated with all this vegetation that sits in front. So hopefully, in a few years, this building will be some kind of uh, concrete element there with vegetation. No, it will be really well integrated into this, uh, into this atmosphere, in a way. No? So, it's really important thinking about that because it's just again to reduce the building to to its minimum term, no? It's just this wall here. So the section also is like this, uh, essentially in order to create public space to have the opportunity to open the river here, no, and to permit the terraces. The section is very pragmatic, permits to have the administrative area here and the study here, and the foyer is there. The upper floor just a garden, there's no building. Also, the landscape is made in a very natural way in order to don't show that exists a building here. And here you can see also the, yeah, how is the, the context here. They have another silo, et cetera, et cetera. No? This is the upper floor, no? And this is the first, the level of this upper, the, the, the first, the second floor. No, so, and this is a space of the interior. So the, really the building is just to create about this facade as a limit and the interior space are con in continuity with the exterior space. No? 
you can see this transparency. It's just like a colonel, no? in a way. These are, everything's made in concrete. This is the, this is the open space for the administrative part. And this is the stairs that bring you from the second level to the first level. This is the exterior uh, connection. But the section is also, I have to say, very pragmatic because permit to have this huge space for the main studio for the ballet. And this is the lower level. The foyer is like a, an extension of the promenade here into the building here. No, the public space is there, and then we have the studio. What is important now, this is start to, they open in very recently here. They put a cafeteria here. Now is, I think, the most uh, popular spot in Zurich to have in a drink. And we are really happy about that because it really, before here was an area quite, yeah, to say a little bit dangerous in a way. Now it starts to be really um, reduced by the citizen, by the people, by the artist, by the dancer, etc., etc. No, and this is the interior space. It's just an extension of the exterior public space into the into the building, and time made with this type of special concrete, the frame, and just uh, that's all. And what is beautiful is that this is facing south. We will have this vegetation. So with the images, it's different, it's difficult to imagine heat. But the shadow, the light, how enter here and react with this building, with the concrete, with the, with the gravity of the concrete, it's really uh, particular in a way. We are very happy. We put some very small furniture there. This is the one of the small studio ballet. This is the big studio ballet, and with the exterior promenade here in the second floor. Always has a meaning. So for example, <clears throat> this wall is inclined, a little bit inclined, because it's a structure that contains the ground, but at the same time is a device in order to control the acoustic. And also this. Space could be a multifunctional space if we take out the, the steps, but these are normal things. And also there are this continuity, no? The people can move here, look inside, etc., etc. In the future, probably this kind of uh, infrastructure, this in the future maybe ruined with vegetation, will sit along the river. Here you see the other bridge that is crossing there and have the possibility to create. It's again, it's something that deals with the specificity of this place, but at the same time, it strives to find an unexpected scenario, reality for this place. Thank you. <clears throat>